esto, Sergio is um, holds the degrees in Bachelor uh, of Science in Computer Engineering from 2011, and then a Master of Science in Intelligent Systems from uh, 2014, a PhD in Computer Science in 2018, uh, all of them from University Universidad Jaume I, and he's currently a senior, senior researcher at the Barcelona Supercomputing Center uh, in the Computer Science Department, and you are also a course instructor uh, on HPC in Universidad de Barcelona. Mm -hmm. okay, so he's currently involved in several HPC projects related to parallel distributed computing, resource management, global modeling, deep learning uh, for industrial applications, and in network servitors. And he will present uh, to us the topic about increasing productivity with MPI Malenu. Okay, thank you, Tony, no. for the introduction. And I've added a subtitle to the to the presentation that is um, increasing the productivity in terms of completed jobs per unit of time. That's important to say. So let's start. Okay, let me. Is this changing? No. 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 <laughs> okay. Traditionally, resources are allocated like this way. So we have a, a job comes to the to the queue, and if there are enough resources to satisfy the request, the job uh, is assigned those resources and starts running. Then imagine that in this case we have a second job waiting for resources because it needs more resources than we have currently available. And it has to wait while job one continue its execution. This job one in this case has changed its stage and at some point it's allocating resources that, uh, that it doesn't need anymore because of a change of the computational state. So it has those allocated resources, but not using. Finally, job one finishes and job two that was waiting in the queue can start its execution. This is the traditional approach. The dynamic approach would, would have been this, that job one during its execution uh, could have released their res its resources and job two could start uh, its execution. So I would like to start by quoting Sun Tzu in his book, The, the Art of War, where we can find a, we can find an interesting uh, idea of dynamic adaptation. He says, just as water shaped its course according to the ground, the soldier works out his victory in relation to the enemy. We can, we can translate this insight, assuming that water stands for, for, the, for the jobs in an HPC facility, and the ground is the underlying resources in the cluster. In this way, therefore, just as water retains no constant shape, so in warfare, there are no constant conditions. And it's what happens in an HPC cluster that the, the status is constantly changing. We are going to, to address this with the malleability. In particular, we, uh, we will present a, a malleability tool based on on process malleability that can change the size of a job during its execution. Particularly, we have implemented malleability using a parallel distributed time, runtime, as it can be MPI, a resource manager system, uh, for instance, SLARM, a communication layer between both subsystems, the, the runtime and the resource manager, and uh, an the unmalleable applications themselves. So the, the solution is DMR that stands for Dynamic Management of Resources. It's a library designed to offer the global advantages, the advantages of process malleability while, while providing a minimalist MPI-like syntax. It reconfigures processes, reallocates resources, and redistributes data. 
It's based on the MPI3 standard and provides an API which can support different under underlying malleability implementations. Currently, Relation is learned and coming soon will support Flux Resource Manager. So basically, what, uh, what it does is uh, the application running and periodically checks the, the status of the cluster that SLARM has the information. So SLARM uh, gets the reconfiguration policy, the job scheduling policy, and the resource policy to provide an action to the, to the runtime. And it is applied to resize a job. This is the, this is the, the scheme of DMR. So we have a, the MPI application that can continue using MPI calls. And apart from that, the MPI can use the DMR API to, to for the reconfiguration, the data redistribution, the resource allocation, the execution resuming, and the process management. All together with some malleability parameters on the top and the interaction with the resource manager SLARM. For instance, <clears throat> we have uh, imagine that we have two processes running on the on a cluster. And at some point, the, the resource manager decides to expand this, this job to four processes. So DMR, what does is to create those processes. It prepares the new data layout, in this case, splitting the data in its process, sending the data to the, to the new processes, and finally, terminating the initial processes and resuming the execution in the new communicator. So for that, we have here an example of a, yeah, of a potential malleable code that it's a, a main loop. And within inside the loop, we have a compute function what, where is what all the brute computation is done. This is perfect for malleability because we have a synchronization point at the end or at the beginning or also at, at the end of the iteration where all the processes uh, are synchronized. DMR malleability parameters, we, we can configure a malleability with these parameters. We can, we can define a lower bound, uh, an upper bound for, for, for expand or for shrinking and a preferred number of processes that, uh, that ideally would be the sweet spot. We also have a reconfiguration inhibitors in the case where the iterations are shorter than the malleability state itself. So we can uh, inhibit periods uh, like uh, in time or also inhibit uh, by number of iterations. The reconfiguration policy is tries to be fair with the status of the system and also with the users. So if we if we give a, a preferred number of processes to run the, the sweet spot, uh, the policy will check if there are queued jobs. If so, uh, the job will be expand or shrunk to the preferred, the sweet spot again. And if there aren't queued uh, jobs, other jobs in the queue, the, the job will be expanded to the upper bound. It is that we have available resources and there is no other job needy, needing that resor those resources so we can expand as much as possible. In the case that we don't give information about the sweet spot, about the preferred value, uh, we are uh, the policy will check if the if a pending job if a pending job in the queue can be initiated with part of my resources. So if the running job can can yield some of its resources to a pending job to initiate its execution, uh, it will be shrink. It will be shrunk. If not, 
it will be expanded because the pending jobs cannot be initiated. So in this case, uh, coming back to the potential malleable code, with DMR, what we can do is uh, add a wrapper to the initialization state of the, of the application, another for the reconfiguration state with the data redistribution function, because uh, we, we need to resize the number of processes and we need, we, we need to know how those processes are gonna communicate with the new ones. And finally, uh, a, a, wrapper, a wrapper for, for the final, finalization stage. Optionally, as, I, as I've said before, we have uh, inhibitors in time and or in number of iterations. And, the, and we can also define the, la, the lower, upper, and preferred number of processes in each iteration if it's needed. So now we are going to see an example how, how it works. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah. So in the, okay, let me check. Okay, yeah, in this, um, in this terminal, we have the SLARM system. So we have allocated nine nodes in the whole system. And here we have the, the DMR subsystem that it's running in a job of the, full system. We have submitted a two node jobs, a two node job, and it immediately has expanded to eight jobs because they were available. Now we have submitted a five node job and the initial job ha has shrunk and this one has started its execution. This is here just a proof of concept and now we will see how what has happened in a, in a better explanation. But here we can see that uh, as long as you are submitting or canceling jobs, you, you see that the resources are changing for those jobs and, and with, in, with the aim of maximizing the resource utilization. What has happened here is that the first job has been submitted a requesting two nodes. It has started and immediately it has been expanded to eight nodes because we had six idle nodes. When the second job arrived to the queue, it, uh, it needed five nodes, but we didn't have uh, available the resources. So the initial job uh, shrunk and yield six, uh, six nodes to the to the system, leaving one idle, and the second job could start its execution with those idle jobs, idle nodes. In the next iteration, we have uh, we have a new arrival, the job 150, and it needs to do to, uh, to nodes. We don't have them available, we only have one idle job, uh, one idle node, sorry. So uh, in this case, the, the scheduler decided to shrink uh, the job 149 and, and job 150 could start, but not only start, but also expanding themselves because it had um, available resources. So the execution continue and you can see in this table how resources change, uh, trying to maximize the utilization of the nodes. As you can see in the top row that the idle nodes try to be a uh, minimum. So this is how it works. Let's uh, analyze the, the evaluation uh, the performance of this, of this system. For these experiments, we have used the 129 nodes in Mare Nostrum, but we had, we had a problem that no malleable application was found. Of course, uh, it's not a common thing in our workloads, so we had to develop them. Particularly, we implemented uh, 
three benchmarks and a bioinformatics tool. So the conjugate gradient, the Jacobi method, an embody simulator, and the HPG aligner, uh, RNA ally. Uh, yeah, it's a, an aligner of RNA sequences. The, the benchmarks uh, had a standard communication pattern. We will see now what's the meaning of that. And HPG aligner had a, an ad hoc communication pattern among processes. For the standard malleable applications, we have a, an iterative workflow and a linear data redistribution pattern. It means that its initial process will send the data or receive the data from a multiple of two. So in this case, the, uh, we have three processes and the expansion is to six, its process will split the, its data and send those half data to the new processes. In the case of the HPG aligner application, we have three type, three, three type, three, three types of um, of processes: workers, managers, um, and writers. So we had to to continue with this scheme and the expansion or or yeah expanding or shrinking the application it can be only affect worker processes so in this case what we did is a, an ad hoc data redistribution pattern just for this application uh, these four these four applications uh, <clears throat> had different scalability, as we'll see now. For instance, the conjugate gradient. What we have here is a metric, a custom metric called performance increase that compares the performance in its configuration with the previous configuration of processes. So for conjugate gradient, we have here that it increases its performance a 38% running in two processes rather than one. The same uh, from uh, with in two in four processes, it runs twenty five at twenty five percent faster than two processes, and so on, so on. We see that it continues scaling, but uh, the, the improvement, the increase, is not uh, so high at the end of the chart. For the rest of applications, the same. We did this test for all of them. And uh, we can see that uh, they have different 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 behaviors. And we also added the embody simulation here, a version that uh, that poorly scale to have more uh, yeah, to have more variety in the workload that we will generate after. To okay. To define the lower, upper, and preferred configurations, we define it uh, a threshold in the ten, in a yeah in the ten percent scale. So the configuration of the of these applications is like this. For the lower limit, we will use the first configuration to exceed the threshold. Okay, so for country gradient and Jacobi will be two because it's the first configuration that exists the, that threshold. The upper limit is the last configuration before going below zero. So zero is the, the end of the chart and the previous configuration will be the upper bound. It's the, the maximum scalability, even if it's not, if, if, if it doesn't increase a lot from the previous configuration. And the sweet spot is the last configuration before dropping below the threshold. So in this area, for instance, uh, for the Jacobi application, we have here. This is the lower the lower limit. We have there in in forty eight, no, in thirty two, uh, the upper limit that is the maximum performance before having negative performance, and the sweet spot that it's uh, for just before the, the threshold. 
Apart from that, the country gradient and Jacobi have, be, have been configured with a 10 second inhibitor inhi, inhi, inhibition period because the iterations were so quick. The workload was generated uh, using this table that I'll explain now. We have four, load, four workload versions, fixed, pure malleable, pure moldable, and flexible. So fixed is the traditional the traditional one where submissions are rigid, so submissions are like they are, and there is no malleability during the execution. For the mal for the pure mal for the for the pure mo malleable, we have rigid submissions, the traditional submissions when we request a a, a fixed number of of uh, nodes. And but here we enable malleability. If you more double it's on the contrary, we the submissions can have a, a range of processes and no malleability during the execution. And finally, flexible, it's uh, combining moldable and malleable. The workload sizes, we will see that it's uh, we have different sizes to, to see the behavior of the jobs in the workload. And jobs in the workload were selected uh, within a likelihood of a 25%. The four, the four applications I described before, uh, they are put in a, in a workload in the shape of jobs. So they are randomly selected. And uh, inter-arrival inter inter time uh, using a factor of one from, from the fatal zone workload generator. It means that a lot of pressure is the uh, yeah, the the, the workload is stressed a lot because a lot of jobs are submitted at the same time or in a in a short time a lot of jobs are submitted. Okay, this is the configuration of the job submissions. We have a for the rigid submission, the traditional submission. We are usually users uh, submit their jobs requesting the maximum number. Uh, yeah, the, the upper bound, the maximum performance, the maximum performance of the application. While for the moldable submission, we we uh, define the minimum, the lower and the upper bound. So the scheduler can decide how to start those jobs. Notice here that moldability is at no no cost for users. The, you don't need to change your code for using moldability. It's for free. It's just a, a resource manager thing. And here we have the, the completion times for the different workload sizes. We can see here, okay, the, the most, for me, the most striking was uh, that moldable time was quite acceptable for the effort that required. So flexible. As suspected, was the the lowest time, but moldable uh, at no cost for the user, it's getting quite an improvement compared to the traditional fixed one. Particularly, uh, the flexible workload speed up uh, is around four x in all the workload sizes. But again, the, the yeah, the, the but the pure moldable probably it's around three x and it's quite good. The problem with the pure moldable is this: this is the resource allocation ratios during the yeah for the for the whole lifespan of the workload. And here we have that for one hundred for the smaller the smallest uh, workload sizes. The pure moldable workload cannot, uh, yeah, it's wasting a lot of resources. So it, it's, uh, it's, it's getting uh, the, the same resource utilization when the workload size increases. And, it's, and it is because of this. We here are comparing the, the smallest uh, workload with the 1,000 job workload. 
Here we have uh, with the in the shapes of colors the pure moldable and the flexible one. So we can see that the flexible is shorter as the time before said. And we also have lines uh, that uh, has the number of concurrent running jobs. <clears throat> so here we have that the difference in the pure moldable since jobs cannot be resized during the execution, they are likely to be initiated with fewer resources because initially when the cluster is empty, jobs are launched uh, with, the, with the maximum performance configuration, but when resources are, are running low, uh, the scheduler doesn't have another, options that, uh, another option that initiating them with fewer resources. And this is what happened here. With fewer resources, usually uh, performance is lower and when jobs, when smaller jobs are finishing, they have to continue with that allocation during the whole life lifespan. So they cannot they cannot get more resources and they cannot finish earlier, as, as it happens in the flexible workload. That the ratio, the allocated ratio, is maintained during the whole during the whole execution. Another handicap of uh, moldability is the average job execution time. In this in this chart, what we have is the 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 running time average for all the jobs in the workload. So we can see here that uh, as the workload size increases, the average job execution time without without taking into account the waiting time increases also and it's because of that because uh, because jobs are expected they are likely to be initiated with fewer resources and their execution time increases because of that another uh, another study that we carried out is the impact of malleability in rich submissions it is uh, rich submissions, the traditional submission way that you ask for the, the resources you want, when we add malleability to those jobs. So we, we have here the waiting, the execution time, and the completion time, that it's the sum of waiting and execution. We can see that for the execution time, when using malleability, we are, uh, yeah, we are losing performance. And it's because uh, the ideal case, the uh, rigid jobs, if submitted uh, with the maximum map performance configuration, with malleability, we at, at some point we are going to shrink those jobs. So we are we are uh, yeah we are removing resources from the execution, and the execution will run slower. But the most remarkable here is the reduction in the waiting time that at the end of the day it's what it's what um, rules the completion time so we are having here a uh, uh, three three more times performance uh, well we are reducing three times the waiting time of the jobs in the queue so they can be initiated earlier on the contrary we have here the malleability impact on moldable submissions. The moldable submissions, we, have, we gave a, a range of resources so the scheduler can decide. And in this case, all the, the speed up is higher for waiting, execution, and completion time, <clears throat> but not so high as the, as the rigid one. Because uh, remember that the moldable submissions, the problem that it has is, is that if they are initiated with just uh, with fewer resources, with, uh, with, yeah, with fewer resources, the execution will run slow during the whole execution. But anyway, here, thanks to malleability, we can overcome that, uh, that issue and increase the, the speed up of the execution. Finally, 
Uh, we also estimate the energy utilization in, in Mare Nostrum, assuming that uh, an idle node consume 100 watts hour and, and a node with load 300 watts hour. So uh, we have a reduction in, in the energy uh, around uh, 75, 80 percent in that. So it's quite, uh, quite, quite interesting. Okay, summarizing the results, workloads are complete around four times faster, and the energy consumption can be reduced. Average job waiting time is reduced, and in turn, more jobs are completed in less time. And malleability reawakes the interest in moldable submission, reducing the execution time and maximizing the resource utilization, the resource utilization rate. Some successful cases we've implemented so, uh, are those uh, described before uh, during the experimentation evaluation. And apart from that, we also have implemented uh, a malleable version of LAMS, the molecular dynamic simulator and the MP data solver. We expect that coming soon, we will have a malleable version of ALIA and of uh, TSMP. Here, I, yeah, I wanted to, to, to leverage the opportunity to make some, to do some spam and ask your collaboration if you are interested in, in make your code uh, malleable. Because for instance, in the case of ALIA, that is the, the computational fluid dynamic code in, at BSC, what we are working on is that uh, in each iteration, we are checking how efficient the iteration it is, uh, which is the cluster status, or which is the priority of the job or the user, to add or to remove resources during the execution. So DMR has proved to improve flexibility and usability, complete workloads faster, reduce average of waiting time, increased resources utilization, reduced energy consumption, and at the end of the day, it uh, lowers the total cost of ownership of a facility. So as uh, Bruce Lee said, be water, my friend. Okay, this is the end. No, this is not the end because now we have uh, two events, two important events that we are organizing in the group that it's the Malability Hackathon and then the Mare Nostrum Hackathon. Now, thank you. Very good, thank you. Do you have any questions? Yeah, there are any, any questions? Uh, I guess you can speak or you can write your questions on the chat. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, try to speak louder. Because uh, yeah, can, the, can the you hear me? The... Yeah, we can hear yeah. you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I, I'm sorry that I managed to uh, join the meeting late, <laughs> but no uh, it seems to be very interesting. Uh, what I was wondering is uh, uh, that uh, at some point I, I noticed uh, that you mentioned the uh, some some kind of uh, red redistribution redis function for the data. Yeah, and I imagine that this kind of function can be really, really difficult to, to code up. Is that correct? It's, it's completely true. <laughs> OK, OK, I see. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, for the standard redistribution functions, like the linear one that I presented in those ben benchmarks, it's, it's quite straightforward. But when you go to a, to, yeah, to a cast, uh, to a custom application with a with a custom redistribution data pattern, so you need to implement it ad hoc for it. So it depends on the on the developer of the application. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Any other questions? Yeah. Um. 
I can ask many questions, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Uh, sure, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll have a I'm a bit surprised to be honest that uh, that you that you managed such good results. Usually, usually um, the trade-off between uh, throughput and and late performance it, it, it yeah. doesn't doesn't work out that well. Um, now I understand that what you're saying is oh uh, processes will will ask for resources and then they they go through phases. Uh, so so they don't need as many resources. That's where we can get in all other all processes. Um, uh, some of the some of the benchmarks you showed don't seem to have that those spaces. I'm, I'm very surprised that you managed to still get get such good balance and, and and improve even more so in energy. I mean, I would have expected better throughput, more more jobs per time but but not quite so much uh, yeah okay job in individually improving so much yeah. okay individually the performance of the job is not improving mm -hmm. because you cannot you cannot uh, yeah, you cannot run faster with fewer resources mm -hmm. so reach it if you want your job to run as fast as possible forget about malleability go to the maximum performance configuration during but if we are sharing the the platform, maybe it's uh, yeah, it's fair for others. So it's like community. So it's right. These jobs that I presented, they don't have phases. They don't have stages. So what we assume is that the user is happy in with every with every reconfiguration. Mm -hmm. So uh, users get, give to the resource manager, completely freedom to do whatever they want with. Well, with those limits, with the upper and the limit, mm. uh, the lower and the upper bound. So a resource manager can take decisions on that way. But yeah, we don't have stages and, and of course, here, this is the, what we are improving is the, the average job execution time. But in front of moldability, but look at that. The fixed one mm -hmm. is the one who performs better because it's, it's logic. And that. But we are like, uh, yeah, like uh, losing a bit of performance to get more throughput, but global throughput in the system. I guess all of them, or most of the applications that are running are closer to their sweet spot. Yes. So actually you get hmm. better uh, efficiency from the course. That's right? it, yeah. The, the sweet spot gives you that uh, information about the efficiency. So yeah, the, the system in this case, maybe it's, uh, it's quite tricky because the system will try always to use the sweet spot as much as possible for all the applications. They won't run at maximum, but they will be more efficient. So resources can be better used. It's like here, right? It's the, the green shape, it's almost all the time at maximum, but when we cannot resize those jobs, uh, the, the shape it's taking the allocating node during the whole execution. So yeah. So even if you have fewer idle cores, you still consume less energy. Yes, because each core because of the time. Okay. You reduce the time for times. Yeah. So energy is gonna be reduced. To tell you the truth, it's an estimation, okay? Because we, we didn't measure the machine because so yeah, maximum load probably they are not uh, at all the time mm -hmm. but but yeah you reduce the workload time you can reduce the the, the, the energy it's yeah it's, it, it it fits quite well because it's around four times so it's those results any other questions so maybe i i would ask in one of the slides, you have shown uh, the example no? where you were going, mm -hmm. you were starting with two and then uh, it was increased to eight. Yeah. And this is because they split. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. uh, yep. As everything is split in two, no? So you can do two, four, eight. Yes. And then you get another application with five. Mm -hmm. um, so you cannot use three in no. the other. Yes. No, you, it's the linear, uh, you, you have to resize it linearly depending on your data redistribution function. It's the, to tell you the truth, that's the hard part. So the user actually writes something to go from A to one and from one to three, then you can actually. Yes, write. or even from eight to three. Yeah, but that's more complex. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's, why, <laughs> that's why we limited the, the study to to yeah to linear increase or decrease yeah but maybe just doing two functions uh, one going on yeah one to two and the other one going one to three you have many combinations there going to one always yes oh yeah but uh, probably you you cannot shrink all the executions to one node okay because of the memory limitation yeah but yeah it was a thing that we also thought but in fact, uh, in fact, that's a very good question. We we, we discussed a lot about that, and let me go here. Here, yeah, this application needs at least three processes to run, mm -hmm. so you cannot go below three, and you can expand. So in this case, you are going to expand for from three to uh, to 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 four because you cannot you only can only expand the workers so that's the linear um, change in the result three to four and then to six because... yeah so it depends on your application and your redistribution function I, I didn't quite get that picture why the manager moves into two workers and the writer moves into a manager and a writer right? no sorry yeah it's the data the data flow so data from manager goes to workers i mean the, the in this case is a, a static data so the application has this this particular application has static data and and the data that is generated in the execution mm -hmm. that that dynamic data is on the workers, but all of the processes need need to have the the static yes, data. Exactly. That is the the genome in this case. So it's an, instead of reading from the disk, we we send it through the network. It's still a lot of data moving. Around. It's a lot, yeah, yeah. It's a lot of gigabytes because of yeah the RNA. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I have another question yeah, uh, yeah. that came to my mind uh, while you were speaking now. Uh, is there any possibility of extending this uh, argumentation also to OpenMP or uh, GPU with CUDA, like cost to device or something like okay. that? This, uh, malleability, this malleability tool is, uh, is thought for, for MPI processes. Mm -hmm. But if you, in your process, implement OpenMP, there is no problem. It's it's for free, it's an MPI application. And the same, we also, the, all these all these applications I've presented, well, except for um, this, that it used pthreads, the other three, the, th the first three of these applications uh, use OpenMP for intranu parallelization. Okay, so you mean uh, it is a, uh... Uh, compatible with the usage of OpenMP, but it's not OpenMP malleable. Uh, yeah, the malleability here, it's only implemented in processes, not I in see. threads. I see. Yeah, okay. that's right. But for the CUDA, the CUDA case is the same. You, you can have your kernels for CUDA and your code, and there is no problem that you continue running it in your MPI processes. So it's mm. completely independent. Okay. No, it's nice because, uh, I mean, uh, when when you mentioned the fact that you have uh, a minimum uh, limit of uh, of number of MPI processes, I was wondering if uh, you managed to uh, increase the number of uh, OpenMP threads. You probably, in some cases, can limit the memory required. 
Yeah, that's right. I mean, I limited the number of uh, MPI processes because of the application. The application had different roles for those processes. And yeah, it, it was the application limit limitation. Okay, okay. No, no, that's interesting. Thank you very and much. Yeah, you can you can launch only one one thread per process and increase the memory. Yeah, and you have more memory available. That's right. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Very good. Any other questions from the audience? If not, let's okay. send the speaker again. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all for attending. Uh, we will be uh, probably closing the session in a few minutes. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Thanks. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Vale. Muchas gracias. A vosotros. Entiendo que yo puedo acabar. Porque no eres tan tuyo.